Water molecules are attracted to each other by hydrogen bonds. These exist because part of a water molecule is slightly negatively charged, while another part of it is slightly positively charged. This might sound really trivial, but this little property of water is essential to life as we know it. A water molecule contains two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. These are covalently bonded together, meaning they share electrons. Oxygen atoms have a larger nucleus with positive protons and so tend to attract the negative electrons towards them more than hydrogen. The result is that part of the water molecule is slightly negative, meaning that the other parts are, relatively speaking, more positive. We can say that water is polar. Just like the ends of a magnet or the poles on Earth, water molecules have opposing ends. In the case of water, there is one negative end and two positive ends. Because opposites attract, water molecules are cohesive, meaning they are attracted to each other, held together by what we call hydrogen bonds. You can see this happening wherever you see a small quantity of water. Water molecules have a tendency to clump together into droplets rather than spread evenly over a surface. Even water molecules falling from a tap will group together. The polar nature of water is really important for living organisms for a few reasons. First up, water allows lots of things to dissolve in it. If we take regular table salt, sodium chloride, as an example and drop it into water, the positive sodium ions separate from the negative chlorine ions. This can happen in water because of the way the positive and negative sides of the water molecules can arrange around the ions. If something can have materials dissolve in it, we call it a solvent, and because of the solvent property of water, it's a great liquid for transport of essential things like ions and glucose around living organisms. An increase in temperature within a material requires the molecules within it to move faster. Because hydrogen bonds take a fairly large amount of energy to break, the molecules don't move around easily. This means that it takes a relatively large amount of energy to change the temperature of water. This is known as the specific heat capacity, and water has a high specific heat capacity. As a result, water habitats like lakes and seas don't change significantly in temperature throughout the year, making them livable habitats in all seasons. For liquids to become gas and evaporate, the molecules need to separate. For water to become a gas and evaporate, hydrogen bonds have to be broken. This takes a lot of energy. Water on skin will evaporate because of the heat energy being released by an organism, and it takes a lot of this energy to make the water turn into a gas. This is known as the heat of vaporization, and we can say that water has a high heat of vaporization. For this reason, sweating is an effective way to remove heat energy from an organism and help it to maintain a constant body temperature. Because hydrogen bonds make water cohesive, meaning the water molecules stick to each other, if you move water molecules, the others around it will be pulled in the same way. This is the reason why water moves up through a plant. Water released by the leaves causes the molecules beneath to move upwards, causing a transpiration pull through the plant. In addition to being cohesive, water molecules are adhesive. This means the molecules can stick to molecules other than water. In the transpiration stream, water can stick to the walls of the xylem vessels which help it to move upwards. Think about a mountain climber. They need to be able to hold onto a cliff face if they want to move up it. The top layer of molecules of water act like a sort of skin, preventing things from breaking in beyond the surface. This is known as surface tension. Think about the molecules in a fluid like the balls in a ball pit. A person who climbs into the ball pit can sink in. If, however, we glue the top layer of balls together, a person that sat on top, assuming they're not heavy enough to break the bonds, would not sink into the ball pit. Hydrogen bonds have a similar effect on water as this glue. Each water molecule is attracted to the others in all directions, but those on the surface have no molecules above to be attracted to. They compensate for this by holding more tightly to the molecules next to them, meaning the top layer of the water forms a sort of skin. This allows very small insects like pond skaters to live on the surface of water without sinking. When most materials go from liquid to solid, the molecules become more tightly packed, so solids tend to be more dense. 
With water, the hydrogen bonds cause solid water to form in a crystalline structure with molecules that are relatively far apart. This means that ice is less dense than cold water and, as a result, ice floats. When temperatures are below freezing point, the ice which forms in a body of water floats and creates a layer at the top, insulating the water below. The area below the ice stays liquid and so the fish and other organisms are able to survive, even in freezing conditions. To recap, the polar nature of water gives it some important properties. It allows things to dissolve in it, it has a high specific heat capacity, it's got a high heat of vaporization, water molecules are cohesive meaning they can stick to each other, they are adhesive meaning they can stick to other things, water has a high surface tension, and because hydrogen bonds force solid water to form in a crystalline structure, ice is less dense than water and therefore it floats.